In this video, we're going to look at two new parent graphs, one of the absolute value and one of the circle. So as we look at our absolute value equation, that would be y equals the absolute value of x. And uh, the general equation is going to follow our other general equations that we have already done, and that would be that you have an a out front, and then you have your major function. Where you see the x, you're going to have an x minus h, and then outside of all that, you're going to have your plus k. So let's take a look at the graph real quick, and it looks like your V-type shaped graph where A equals 1, and here is your stretch factor of 1. So if you move 1 to the right from your vertex, we call that, then you will move 1 up because A is equal to 1. If A is equal to 2, you see that if you move 1 to the right, you move up 2, and so on and so forth. As you change A, that changes what that stretch is. Even if you flip it upside down, if A is negative 1, when you move 1 to the right from your vertex, and you move down um, one for that a value. Same goes for h and k and from our other parent graphs. That will shift your function up and down or left and right. h will move it left and right and k will move it up and down. Um, and then you can stretch from there. So that stretch factor is always from starting at your vertex. So let's put that into our notes. The description of the lo locator is called the vertex. And um, the other technical word for it is called the cusp, C-U-S-P, and that's going to be at H-K. So we'll draw our parent graph here. Here's going to be H-K, and it is going to be a V-shaped graph. The properties are for this that there is a line of symmetry. There's a line of symmetry right through that vertex similar to our parabola, but not the same uh, because it is a straight line coming down and then back up after you hit that cusp. So it's still going to be at x equals h for that line of symmetry. An absolute value, you can do the absolute value of all of your numbers, so your domain is going to be all reals. Or uh, you could use your math notation for x exists in all reals. Your range does depend upon what your k is, similar to your parabola. If a is greater than 0, then your range is going to be greater than or equal to k. But if I were to change this so that a was negative instead, like it had flipped it around, so here's where a is less than 0, then your range is less than or equal to k. And that would be your absolute value graph. Let's switch to circles now. Circle is going to be a little bit different for us because um, it can't be written in y equals. We've already talked about circles a little bit and how uh, their equation is different and how their graph is different from others. So your parent equation has a lot more going on. It's x squared plus y squared equals r squared. And so your center of the circle is going to be the locator point. And that center is still going to be at wherever hk is. So if I don't have any shift or anything going on, then hk is going to be here at your origin for your parent graph. So let's take a look at this graph for our circle. And so here we see our circle centered at the origin, and this has a radius of 1. So that's what that x squared plus y squared equals r squared is important for. Let's tell you what your radius is. So as I shift my h around, you can see that still shifts it right and left. Um, and then as I shift my k, it still moves that up and down. And then the r is also something that can change. So there's no stretch factor here because there is an r in your equation. So, I mean, it kind of acts the same thing, but it's an important aspect um, where r is, of course, the radius going from your circle to the edge. So as we go back to this, your general equation, wherever you see an x, you're still going to be subtracting h. So it's going to be x minus h quantity squared. And now that you're doing stuff you're not solved for y. y is implicitly written in your equation. Now the k is going to be subtracted from y. And then it's equal to r squared. This is your general equation for your circle. And so drawing a circle, one of the easiest ways to do it is to know that r is your radius. So from your center, you can draw little tick marks that are r units away uh, from that center. So to the right, and up, and left and down, try to make them all symmetrical, and then your circle is what connects all those 
points. And that's how you can draw hopefully a pretty nice circle there, where your radius is this distance, and that's going to be your distance r as well. Now, because if you take a look at this, this isn't written in y equals form, and uh, if you were to try to graph it on your calculator, you would have to write it as two separate equations, much like your sleeping parabola, because it is not a function. It is not a function. So the last piece is our domain and our range. So let's go back to our graph real quick. And so if I change my center back to 0, 0, and then we look at my radius, so now we're talking about domain and range. So now we're thinking about x's. So here's your x is negative 5 and your x is positive 5. And so all of those x values are what's used for your domain. And your range is all of these values. But as I shift my uh, center, wherever it is, you see that that would change your domain and range. So um, the way we have to write this out, we have to do it a little bit more, um, with a little more precision when we're talking about our domain and range. So if I say, all right, so we're going to be less than or equal to x, which is less than or equal to something else, the left side is going to be the farthest most x value to the left, and that's going to be r units away from h. And so the way we write that would be h minus r here. And for this right side, that's going to be h plus r. That's how we would write our domain. Range would be similar, except you're dealing with y's and k's. And so um, your range is going to be less than or equal to y. Um, and so if we go down, that is k minus r. So here is k minus r to k plus r for your values. It's easier when you look at the graph of it, but as far as our formula is concerned, you have to use the H's and the K's. So those would be the parent graph information pieces that you need to know for absolute value and for circles.